So I am standing in for Hassan Salim, who was to present at this time. Hassan is a co-founder and past chairman of TCF, the Citizens Foundation, which is the brainchild of five Pakistani businessmen who set out to do something meaningful as a solution to Pakistan's multiple problems. And so they funded the first five TCF schools. In just under 20 years, TCF has grown to 1,000 school units in all parts of the country with an enrollment of over 150,000 children, half of them girls. It's a fascinating story <coughs> of an amazing organization and the great people behind it. But I'm not here to talk about TCF alone. Uh, I think the topic I'm supposed to, or Hassan was supposed to talk about, is the role of NGOs and international donors. So as I move on, you'll see I will touch on, on those points. I first met Hassan when I was introduced to TCF in 99. It's because of visionary and generous TCF leaders like Hassan and his co-founder colleagues that the Citizens Foundation has been recognized internationally, internationally rather, for its impressive achievements and for creating a model system that exemplifies how education should be managed in Pakistan. I shudder at the thought of what the state of education reform would be today if DCM, TCF had not been established. It is truly a story in the making of a Pakistani solution to Pakistan's dismal education system. I believe I know Hassan quite well, but I don't know what he would have to say today, so what I present today are my own thoughts, but I will borrow heavily from two outstanding individuals. First, of course, is Hassan Salim, who is deeply involved in education reform at the highest strategic levels, as well as a member of the Education Reform Task Force in Pakistan. The second person is Dr. Anjum Altaf, currently <coughs> the provost of Habib University in Karachi. He was mentioned a little earlier. <coughs> Dr. Altaf is a strong advocate for education reform in Pakistan and a friend of UC Berkeley's programs related to Pakistan and Urdu language. Anjum Altaf was to deliver the keynote today and we deeply regret that Dr. Altaf was not able to travel due to health reasons. That's the way things happen especially in Pakistan. So, Hassan Salim <coughs> is here somewhere, and Ajum Altaf was not able to make it. I mean, Jan, unfortunately, just made it in time to make an appearance. Thank you, I mean. Uh, most of what I know today about reform is because of many conversations I have had with Hassan and Ajum Altaf. So, now for my thoughts. The body of knowledge is growing at an incredible pace thanks to the digital revolution and advances in communications, storage, and retrieval technologies. Delivering technology-based education to millions of people, young and old, has never been easier than it is today. Yet, it seems hard to imagine that in these times, we have millions of children in one country that may never see a classroom, a school, a library, or a computer. The fear is that many of the same children may end up on the wrong side of the street, feeling frustrated, angry, and deprived of opportunity because we did not educate them. We must do more and much more to plant the seeds of learning at a very young age and to produce educated youth who acquire early learning skills to learn even more as they grow and develop into good, productive, and contributing citizens in a tolerant and peaceful civic society. 
Such an education system will need the right foundations of policy, institutional integrity, adequate resources, commitment to quality, and willingness to change and improve the system almost continuously. Because in most cases, change is good and there is always room for, for improvement. Pakistan, with its bad politics and horrible bureaucracy, an outdated, corrupt, feudal system of mismanagement, tenured, bad teachers, non-existent ghost schools, and no concept of children's rights, has huge gaps in the education system. But many of us here today know firsthand <coughs> that a great deal of good work has taken place in recent years and that reform efforts are moving in the right direction. Make no mistake, a lot of hard work is ahead of us, but reform is moving forward. It is imperative that we keep the momentum going because the alternative is a rapidly worsening scenario. I think Pakistan is at a crossroads. With the geopolitical upheaval in the Middle East, it is also in the crosshairs of groups who have a different purpose. I don't think I need to say much more on that subject. In my view, the underlying cause of the education crisis is, number one, low priority on the part of the policymakers, and number two, lack of public demand for affordable, accessible quality education. Changing that status quo will require public outcry and vocal demand for many more schools and quality education. Collectively, we need to speak up and mobilize support for demand. So I would like to suggest what can be done by NGOs, but I'd like to first state that NGOs are doing outstanding work in altering the lives of thousands of underprivileged Pakistani children by providing better opportunity through education. Their efforts are to be commended and supported. But what are the other roles NGOs can perform? What can be the role of NGOs in the reform of the education system in, the, in Pakistan? The term reform implies that the system is functioning reasonably well and improvements are required just at the margins. In this perspective, there is agreement that improvements in content and teaching methods are at the top of the agenda. Some NGOs are already experimenting with more effective teaching methods and better learner-friendly content in their schools. Suggestion number one, NGOs can consciously strengthen this function by using their schools as labs for innovative changes in curriculum and teaching methods. For example, include courses to promote increased tolerance, train teachers to facilitate critical thinking in young minds, and promote inquiry-based learning. NGO schools should hold joint workshops to discuss and evaluate innovative methods of teaching with current technology and distance learning, multimedia, and inquiry-based approach. The next step would be to work towards having these innovations adopted in public school systems. And this is where NGOs can play a greater role. Number two. Multiple studies confirm that there's a widening gap between demand and supply. On the demand side, we have an estimated 25 million out-of-school children, plus the annual, annual increase in child population, probably three to four million per year. On the supply side, there is severe deficit of schools and teacher capacity. The total number of schools run by NGOs is a few thousand, and the total number of students enrolled are a few hundred thousand. NGOs cannot fill the gap or act as substitute service providers. Ultimately, 
responsibility of providing universal education rests with the state. <coughs> the most effective role in this context is for NGOs to act as a pressure group to lobby the state to discharge its responsibility to the citizens. Number three, education is a right that has to be won in a political struggle. It will not be given to citizens as charity, and we should not expect supply without effective demand. Therefore, NGOs need to act as consciousness-raising groups to mobilize citizens around their basic right to do, excuse me, their basic right to a good education. My suggestion number four. Both the state and international donors claim to have invested a very large amount of funds in education. This effort has been very high in visibility, but very low in impact. NGOs must act as a watchdog group on behalf of citizens and ask for greater accountability. Collaboration with the media to investigate into the outcomes of specific projects would generate the pressure to improve results. Number five, NGOs should join hands and develop an action plan as a coalition of organizations. It may be a challenge to put aside vested interests of each NGO to have harmony and united positions for action as a coalition, but it should be attempted and pursued with patience. A little more on coalition of NGOs. Collectively, NGOs can be a strong catalyst for change. By default, NGOs and private school providers, even operators of single schools, are already a part of the national discourse on education and very much part of advocacy for the rights of children to receive good education. The coalition should develop a well-articulated strategy for advocacy through partnerships and alliances with media. Organizations and individual citizens may feel at risk with open and public advocacy. The coalition as a collective voice <coughs> mitigates the perceived risk and also carries more weight with unified action. The coalition should strive to be an unbiased, non-political voice of reason and moderation. An international coalition of NGOs and interested parties may be the best next step. The objectives of the coalition should be defined and finer details allowed to emerge as an action strategy evolves. NGOs should also engage their own donors. Key donors and high-profile individuals should be asked by the NGOs they support to adopt a vision for the bigger picture of national <coughs> education beyond the NGO's efforts. What should be the role of international donors? International donor agencies should be expected to have a vision for future assistance to Pakistan and clear answers to why previous efforts have failed. It is important to make international donors realize that they cannot do what they please and what may be politically advantageous for them. That there needs to be clear accountability to the recipient as well. The donor efforts are not harmless. They can prevent reform by creating the illusion of a lot of money being spent on education. International donors should be asked for an evaluation of previous investment in education in Pakistan, how much they have put in since the program started, and what is there to show for it. What is the explanation for such low returns, and how do they aim to adapt in the future? We do not need to be deferential to international donors or intimidated by them. As professionals, we should ask for a professional assessment. 
the national and diaspora, national and diaspora donors <coughs> play an important role as well. Pakistani and diaspora donors must be informed and educated to the vision of education reform as the ultimate goal of all NGOs. NGOs can conduct open forums of their stakeholder donors, ask for their direction, and gain their support. With that, I will conclude my remarks and probably have an opportunity to raise one more additional point during the panel discussion, which is the importance of vocational training and that being an area where NGOs in Pakistan are sorely lacking. There are very few well-run vocational training centers run by NGOs. So uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs>